over the last two years, some of us have been using Microsoft Teams. Now, whether you love it or hate it, actually in our work organization, everyone uses it. If we use Microsoft Teams to its full potential, it can really be an asset to online meetings. However, most of us do not know how to use it properly. And instead of loving it, we actually hate Teams. So here are 10 Teams features that you probably knew nothing about, but will help you learn to love Teams and use it to the max. Number one, sometimes you need to mute or unmute quickly. This might be because the doorbell goes, your dog starts barking, your child starts screaming, whatever it is, if you want to mute or unmute quickly, you can do this with an easy shortcut. In Mac, it's Command, Shift and M, and on Windows, it is Control, Shift and M. Now, there is certainly a temporary way that you can mute and unmute, and that is by holding down the space bar. But remember that the space bar mute only works when you're actually pressing it. So if you need to go away and sort something or answer the door or feed the dog or sort your kids holding the spacebar one won't work so you're better to use the actual full keyboard shortcut number two sharing the meeting link i think it's fairly common that someone can't find the meeting link and then everyone's looking around trying to find it there is a quick way to find and share the meeting link in teams click on people click on share invite and then click on copy link and that is it you have your link that you can share this will save you countless future years of your life trying to find missing links number three want to switch over to your mobile in the middle of a meeting this happens to me pretty commonly i'm in a meeting i need to go somewhere but i can still stay in the meeting while I'm walking or whatever, I would like to move the meeting smoothly from my computer to my mobile without having multiple me's logging on at once. There is a very easy way to do this in Teams. You go to the Teams calendar in your mobile app, click join meeting, click transfer to device, you choose your mic and camera and then you click transfer now and that is it. It actually switches you over from one device to the other. You do not need to join twice and it is very cool and smooth. Number four, control who can actually come into the meeting. So sometimes you want to put people in the lobby first rather than them all just jump into the meeting and you want to admit them sometimes you want to skip the whole admit the person thing and you can set that easily in teams click more click meeting options and then you can choose who is allowed to admit people it doesn't need to just be you but it could be if you want to you can also set there whether people can come straight into the meeting or whether they have to be admitted this can potentially reduce all these please admit pings if you've got a very large meeting that ping can happen all the time and it can drive you nuts. Number five, sometimes you have to turn your camera off right now really quickly and there is a shortcut for this. This might be because someone has walked into the room, something inappropriate is happening in the background or unexpected and you want to just turn your camera off and before you start panicking you can do this really quickly with a shortcut. Your shortcut on your Mac is Control Shift and O and on your PC is Alt and O. This turns your camera on and off with one keyboard shortcut. Six, sometimes you want an alternative to your audio feed. You can have a live transcription which adds a transcription to the side of your screen or you can have captions which will add captions under the screen this is great for accessibility for people with hearing impairment for people who might speak a different language from you who might not understand my accent or when people's attention sometimes drops out to have that transcript or these captions is a really nice option and it's easy to set up just go to more on the desktop and you'll see that you can turn them on and off and you can actually even choose what language you have for your captions here too this will really help improve accessibility for your team meetings. Number seven, want to add a little bit of flair to your chat messages. Sometimes it can get a little bit dull, but you can actually format them, which although we know we can do this in documents, I didn't actually know you could do this in Teams until recently. If you press the A button at the bottom of your chat box, actually you'll see all the formatting pop up and you can format your message. You can put it in bold, you can put it in italics. This is a nice way of being able to format your message to shake things up a little bit and add a bit of flair and interest to your meeting chat. Eight, remove the distractions by flicking to different people. Some Sometimes when there's lots of people in the meetings and it's set to just flick the attention to whoever is making noise, it can be really distracting, especially if someone doesn't have their mic and they're shuffling papers that can keep flicking between. You can actually change to spotlight on one particular person. To do this, you click on the three dots beside someone's name, you choose spotlight for everyone, and then you click to confirm. This is a really good way if you've got a speaker talking to someone, even if you have people asking questions, you might want the spotlight to stay on that one speaker and it helps remove distractions. Number nine, when you share a video, make sure you share the sound of that video too. I know we've all been there when someone shares a video, the sound is not playing and actually all you're hearing is the sound coming out of their computer into their microphone and back in so it's a really bad version of the sound. So make sure you share the sound in 
Teams as well. Click share and make sure you switch on includes computer audio. It's really easy to miss this, but once you've done it, it'll mean that when you're sharing, the sound will share as well as your video. Number 10, you can easily get a list of participants of the meeting, which is really handy for minutes or when you can't remember who attended or who didn't. Go to people, click the three dots and then click to download the attendance list. And there you have it. You'll have a list of everyone who's attended your meeting. There you go. These are my 10 tips on how to use Teams to make it work better for you. If you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy my video on seven Zoom hacks, which you can see right here.